Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line, talking about the environment, talking about sustainability in Tennessee. How realistic is it? What does it take to get us there? Uh, Jeff Barry with the Tennessee Environmental Council is our guest joining us via Zoom. He's defined what sustainability is. Essentially, how does this generation meet its energy needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their energy needs? And, and Jeff, I wanted to talk about electric cars. That was something that we didn't get to in that first segment. Mm -hmm. Where are we with those? It seems like we're seeing them more and more. Where are we going to be in 10 years with those? You know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, encouraging, for sure. And I would say I'm pleased that Tennessee is, is really becoming a leader in creating the electric car infrastructure and the charging stations across Tennessee along the interstates in particular. Uh, because as you know, we can all go get a, an electric car now. Nissan cranks them out every day, the Leaf, and they also have uh, an SUV. I'm not sure the name of it. Um, Ford is building their EV um, plant in West Tennessee that, that seems to be flying through is with approvals. And we are, we are now seeing that massive transformation in the, the global economy where all major auto manufacturers have um, EV, electric vehicles, as a big part of their future. And some have said that's all they're going to manufacture in the near future. In the next, we're talking 10 to 15 or 20 years. So we, um, they're so much easier and more affordable to, uh, to purchase an electric vehicle now. And they're great for getting around the city or the, the local community. And the, the charging infrastructure is required to make the longer trips practical for the average person. But it's, it's happening. We're in the midst of that transition from a fossil fuel based automotive industry to one that is largely electric uh, vehicle based. It's a monumental shift and and it, and it took some time because there was that whole documentary, you know, who killed the electric car and it was, I think, yes. the oil and gas industry. Why would they want it? They don't want that. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. it's actually happening. And I guess the oil and gas industry is not killing it. Maybe they've jumped on board. Why is it happening now? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great question. Well, part of it is because the um, all the global indicators, well, first of all, electric vehicles are so much more efficient, simple, um, mechanically, they're easier to maintain, they require m way less resources to, um, to operate, to own and operate an electric vehicle. So there's a lot of economics and uh, engineering design and simplicity that is responsible for EVs, electric vehicles becoming so popular. and. You know, it'd be an interesting question to ask Nissan or Ford or GM, all of them have plants here in Tennessee, um, what, what is the driver for them? And yeah, I think um, there are some things, you know, when California implemented its mandate that a certain number of its cars sold in California would be electric vehicles, uh, that, that is a, a major driver because California is like the seventh largest economy in the world. So. Um, so sort of like some of those local political efforts um, do have global ramifications. So they're, they're better vehicles in many ways, more efficient, more, el more simple and efficient. So you can go way farther on, a, well, there's no gallon of gas with an electric vehicle. I think it's the equivalent of over 100 miles per gallon if you're charging up your electric vehicle. Wow. Yeah, as far as what you That's pay. amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, I was actually looking, uh, I went to the Kia um, dealership up in Madison, um, Rivergate. And I'm just, I'm curious about the cars and I test drove, um, one of their plug-in hybrids, which runs on gas and the electric batteries. Uh, they have some brand new EVs there that are beautiful and their electric equivalent or the miles per gallon equivalent is over hundred miles per gallon compared to what you would be paying for gasoline if you drive an EV. Could you get so stuck somewhere? I mean, could you run out of charge and be stuck? I don't know if you're driving across the country or if you're driving around Nashville. I mean, is that, or do you feel like there are enough places or we need more? What, what, what are your thoughts there? Well, currently there are enough places in town. So if you relied on an electric vehicle, uh, I'm amazed how many Teslas are, are on the streets these days. Yeah. Uh, but if you rely on an electric vehicle, there are plenty of charging stations. Um, Music City Center has a charge has many charging plug-in spots. Um, there are and when you once you get the EV, you you probably get the app that shows you where all those charging stations are. So if you're getting below a certain threshold, like you're getting to empty, the, 
relative empty on your electric charge, then if you had to, you could go plug in somewhere. But most people are good at budgeting and they know, well, I have enough charge to get me to work and to the store and back home and I can plug in once I get home. And that's the beauty of it. You fill up at home. You never need to stop at the gas station. Very interesting. All right. Uh, what about, okay, show and tell. You, you want to show some things, and I appreciate that, that would yeah. help make each of our homes more sustainable. And um, I guess if it, show us what you're talking about, again, with incorporating that definition of what we're talking about, sustainability. But, I mean, are there some things you could show us? Absolutely. And everything I'm going to show you will save energy and natural resources. And, I, I mean, I'll just start with you, you. You mentioned the definition of sustainability as re relating to energy usage. And, and, of course, LED light bulbs and LED holiday lights and strip lights are beautiful and they change colors and they have effects and you can dim them. Uh, they're really amazing and they use a, a fraction of the energy compared to the older technologies of light. So uh, LED lighting is an energy saving thing. If you change all your lights at home, you're gonna save on your energy bills every month, your NES bills if you live in Nashville. Um, so I like to, I made an entire documentary about energy conservation. So um, I've preached that message for um, quite a few years. And this time of year, people are kicking up their thermostat or uh, to keep their inside of their homes warm and comfortable. And the higher you set your thermostat, so my, I keep mine at usually 67 degrees. Now, a lot of people would say, ooh, that's cold. Well, I do have this, this vest thing on and, and I stay quite comfortable in my home. Um, but the high, every degree higher on your thermostat adds up significant cost on your power bills, which means you're using more energy. And we still get a good amount of our power generated from coal in, the, in this area, although we're re relying less and less on that. So, but every, every, um, every degree on your thermostat that you adjust is gonna save you uh, money. And this time of year, the, the lower you're setting, the more you're saving in energy, in money, on your bills, and better for the environment. So, and the other thing, it's really simple, is to plug your electronics into power strips. Like I have my Wi-Fi router and some other things plugged into a power strip and I just keep that in the off position at night when I'm not using them. I turn it on first thing in the morning so my Wi-Fi is charged up and it uh, cycles back on and I'm back in business. But these little things, the, the little energy losses in our homes add up to significant amounts of energy that's required um, just to keep um, homes running, especially this time of year. So that there's, there's trip, a few, you really that, that could make a difference? I mean, that's an interesting thing, but you turn that off and on, it, you leave stuff plugged in all night, it adds up. It does. If you, if you feel your router, your Wi-Fi router, for example, it's warm, which means there's energy being consumed in it when it's on and the lights are on. The lights don't use much energy, but, um, but when, you, when you turn that off, it just cuts the flow of electricity. So um, I can't give you a kilowatt hour savings total, but it, is, it does add up and it does make a difference. Um, and there's the microwave oven, anything that has a little LED clock on it, um, those things all are drawing energy when you're not using your television even when it's plugged into the wall is using energy when you're not watching it. So um, it helps to plug all those things into power strips or you can unplug them from the wall, but that's a little bit more, less convenient. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Ross. Hello, Ross. Yes. Go right ahead. Uh, I purchased my solar panel sometime back a few years ago about four years ago and they provide me one one third of my electricity so that makes my electricity in in south central kentucky cost me about 6.2 cents per kilowatt and i also bought an electric car during the covid years right after the the, the people that rent cars, dumped all those cars on the market, the cost of electric cars went way down, so I bought an electric car. So that means I can drive a mile and it costs me about 1.55 cents per mile. And uh, 
we just use the car locally. We don't really take trips in it. I mean, I might go 80 miles out and 80 miles back, but that 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 car is really our favorite car, and and that one foot driving that it has, where you don't even need to use the brakes. Uh, we we use the no, nobody wants to use electric uh, gasoline car anymore. As a matter of fact, I had to buy, buy a battery maintainer to put on it. So it would start when we wanted to use it. Uh, it would sit there and it wouldn't even start. The battery would go down on it after so many months. Wow, really? So, yeah. So that that's that's how we use our electric car. And and I I just used the trickle charger that came with it. Uh, we Wednesdays are when we use it the most. My wife volunteers at Hotel Inc. And uh, that's. That's on the other side of town. Plus, we've got another well, Ross, trip, and we sometimes deliver food for them. I'm most interested so, that uh, you know, Ross, you know how much you're saving. I mean, you've, you've done the math, and you know how much you're paying per mile and how much right. you're paying for um, heating and cooling your home. So that's pretty good. It, here's what I would recommend. If, if you're a family with more than one vehicle, one of them needs to be an electric car. And and just use it for local driving and, and the wife she's she's out with some friends tonight she took the electric car nobody wants to to, to use a gasoline car anymore i mean the only time it gets used is when the electric car is already gone and and one of us you know need to go somewhere and the electric's not available but now if we're going to travel any great distance we'll use a gasoline car or oh we've got a motor home you know if we're taking a trip but uh all right. Well, Ross, thank you. I appreciate your You're call. You're welcome. Thank you, Ross. All right, what do you think of Ross's call? It's a great testament to what we're talking about. The The change is underway. Um, people from all walks of life are, are going electric. And I love uh, his uh, suggestion that if you have more than one car, make one of them electric. Um, so all those trips in the city can be zero emission and what? A, 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 a penny per mile or something like that some incredible forget the the dollar amount he mentioned but it was uh, an incredibly inexpensive way to get around especially when gas prices are up over three dollars a gallon it really makes the difference that's a major factor i'm sure gas prices now are really high and i bet people yeah. are going to start looking again at these uh, electric cars um, they've, they've been really expensive but i guess he said they, they dumped a bunch on the market they came down do you feel like the price is coming down? I do. It's still prohibitive for me. Um, and I haven't looked at used electric vehicles, but the, the, the prices are way more affordable than they have been. You don't have to buy the specialty Tesla anymore. Uh, the Nissan Leaf is sort of like the every everyday person's um, EV manufactured right here in Tennessee. Um, I think it's probably one of the most affordable electric vehicles on the market around here. I mean, the, the Chevy Bolt and the Ford um, C-Max. Um, you know, there are quite a few now that are on that um, economy uh, scale. All right, all right, we're gonna take a break. We'll come back, continue the discussion. If you wanna call in, there's the number 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We can also talk about some bills in the legislature. I'll get a little more in depth on, on some of that when it comes to the environment. Take a break, we'll be back right after this.